Okay, we're going to take a look at the Kessler Crane Pocket Jib Traveler, and this is just a super piece of video equipment. Now, when we first started shooting videos, we were shooting handheld, and we were moving the cameras all over the place, and it looked terrible, and then we decided to lock the cameras down on tripods, which helps a lot. And now we're figuring out ways to move the camera again. But the difference between this and the way we used to move our cameras is these tools allow for very smooth movements. We're talking about jibs, sliders, dollies, and these are the things that Hollywood professionals have been using for years. Now this is the Kessler Crane Pocket Jib Traveler, which the big advantage to me is the size and weight. And by the way, people talk about how light this is. It's five point something pounds. It feels very solid. So it's not feather light and it's super well made in my opinion. I was really impressed when I unboxed this thing this morning. And these clips you're going to see me do are my first clips that I did with this tool. And so you can pick it up really quickly and as long as you have it leveled, the tripod leveled, which you see I'm doing there, and as long as you have it balanced properly, and I've got those uh, those York plates at a used um, a store that sells used sporting goods. They're 50 cents a pound. I got two two and a halfs and two uh, I think one and a quarter pound ones, which is all I need to balance my cameras. My cameras are all relatively light. This jib will carry 10 pounds on the front, but n none of my cameras and lens combinations are that heavy. And in this case, what you're watching here, I'm using my Sony RX100 Mark IV, which is a super lightweight camera. So what you do is once you get it completely balanced and you do a couple of test swings just to make sure that everything is lined up right, and you, of course, turn your camera on and you get it in the low angle and you make sure that the shot that you have in the low angle is framed the way you want it. And if it's not framed, of course, you reposition until you get it framed right. And then, of course, you can swing the jib up and watch as you swing it up and see if the shot, the entire shot, is the shot that you want. And then once you get all that set up right, <clears throat> then you, of course, start rolling the camera, hit record, and you just take one finger if you're guiding it from the end, the far end away from the camera, you just take your one finger and push down on it and trying to keep a constant speed. And you can also control it from the camera end as well. But on, on these shots that you're seeing here, I controlled it from the back side. So you're going to see when I actually start rolling the camera, which I'm going to do here in a second, you can see how I actually pushed it for the actual clip. And by the way, that knob I turned right there is a little tensioner. You can add a little bit of tension to it so that you get a little bit of resistance so that when you push it, maybe it'll be a little smoother. And again, I'm brand new to this. This is I just got this thing, and, and you're seeing me do the, the first clips that I've done with it. And here I just started low, and then as you can see, as I push it up, it just, it just gives a nice little movement. And there I am pushing with one finger, and you're going to see the clip. And then you'll see the whole clip at the end here. But um, it really gives a nice smooth flow. And by the way, this is something I haven't heard anybody else mention. I do leave the, the optical steady shot turned on on these cameras. I tried it with this Sony RX100 Mark IV. I also tried it with my Panasonic FC1000. And I'll go also with the image stabilization on. And I think that that helps cancel out any little tiny movements that you make that you don't really want to do. So it seems to work good. So chime in in the comments if you think that stabilization should not be turned on on the camera when you're doing this. I, I've, I'm getting good results with it turned on. And I haven't heard anybody else comment on that. And here it is. Here's the, um, the full clip here so you can see. Just nice and smooth. And again, the speed with which you do this is personal taste, right? And the shot you're doing. Do you want it to be a faster uh, movement or a, a very slow, steady movement like you're seeing here? You can do both with this with this item. And you can also, as you swing it up, if you if you loosen the pivot, you can swing it up and and as you're going up, go to the left or right. 
here you're going to see the um, unboxing, how it comes. It comes packaged very nicely, and super pleased to see that this was made in these United States of America. And again, extremely well made. I got this on sale, um, their Cyber Monday sale or whatever, which rarely happens that I think that they have these on sale, but at 15% off, I think this was 440 some odd dollars shipped. Um, of course, the next day one went on eBay and, and now it's like $390 or something. Uh, but I just assume buy brand new from Kessler and support them and, and uh, know that if I have a problem, I can contact them. Super well-made unit and they do stand behind their, their gear from what I can tell from what I've read online. And it, with any kind of reasonable care, I think this jib is going to last quite a while. It is, like I say, super well made. I hate to keep repeating myself, but it, it is worth repeating that, that it looks like they dot all the I's and cross the T's when they make this product. And one claim to fame of this is that it's all completely self-contained. The only thing that's a loose part is that clip that you use to hold the, um, the uh, uh, weights on the end because that, that comes off and that goes on the end. But the rest of it, every time you unfold it and install it, everything stays part of the unit. You're not going to lose parts. Parts aren't going to be laying around that you're going to going to lose. And one thing I will tell you is that, and you're going to see when I fold this out, when you loosen the knobs that allow it to telescope out, some of those you have to turn further than you think you might have to turn them. You turn them and it feels loose and then you try to telescope it out and it, and it won't come out and, and you just have to loosen it a little more and then you can get it to come out. But it's a type of thing where once you do it a couple times it's going to be a piece of cake. I am probably going to try to put a quick release on the in, bottom of this and so that I can, an Arca Swiss style quick release, and so that I can move it quickly from one tripod to the other because all my tripods have Arca Swiss on them. But in this case for this demo, I just put it straight on the tripod, and this is my heaviest enduro tripod, so this is a very solid enduro tripod. I'm also going to try the unit with some of my lighter duty enduro tripods. All of my tripods are, are fairly stout, but some of them are considerably lighter duty than others. So I'm going to try it on all of them, and in the article that I'm going to write accompanying this, I'm going to mention you know how well those other tripods worked out once I've tested them. So I'm hoping that it'll pretty much work on any of my Enduro tripods, including my Gran Turismo Travel Enduro tripod, which is pretty strong for a travel tripod. Here you can see I put an Arca Swiss on the end uh, to put the camera right on the end. And here you can get an idea of the precision of this thing. And once you, once you loosen this, then that's what allows it to um, pan around 360 degrees. That, that all comes part of the unit. It's not an additional add-on that you have to buy separately. So they thought of a lot of things here. And you can see the quarter 20 taps on there. So if you have to hook a monitor on. And this is where you adjust the tension right there. If you want a little bit of resistance, which again, some of the other jibs out there either don't offer this option or, or the way it works is not as well made as this. This has a bearing in there and it's really, really well made. So it's going to hold up and it's not going to bind on you and be jerky. So this is not a toy. They really thought of everything. And you can see this is where you put the weights on the end. And then you got that little clamp to hold them. And um, there's the little cloisonne name of it and all. But you can see the precision. I, the reason I did these close-ups is a lot of the videos that you see out there don't show any real close-ups. And I wanted to show a few close-ups just so you can see like the precision of how well this thing is made. And again, made in these United States of America, really impressive. I mean, if I could buy a unit in China for $200 less, I'd still just as soon buy this and get the real thing and, and get the precision that you get with this Kessler unit. This is, a, this is a situation where you absolutely do get what you pay for with a, with a piece of gear like this. And, and I'm hoping that this will last me a long time. So why not get the best? And, and I, I really think this is the best lightweight travel jib out there. I did quite a bit of research on it, and I'm pretty impressed with it. And by the way, this is kind of folded up a little bit on the tripod so that I can fold it like this, fold in the tripod legs, and, and move it from one spot to the other. You don't have to break it down completely to do that. And here are some more shots that I did, some more jib shots I did here at the Sun and Fun Resort in Sarasota. 
and you can see again this is my first first shot at it and I'm impressed I, I kind of like the the clips you let me know in the comments what you think and I'll keep testing it if I run into any issues or whatever I will mention them I'm gonna link to the article that I'm gonna write about this I'm gonna link to it from the YouTube video so you'll be able to go to that and see some other videos some other test videos and so forth and I might put a couple of other people's reviews in there and then um, you can make up your own mind as to whether or not this is a piece of equipment that you need to add to your workflow so thanks for watching and do please subscribe to my video channel and share around share comment you know like all of those good things look me up on Facebook connect with me there put in a friend request there and I'll be happy to approve you and um, do do check out my Twitter because I post everything I do on there that's twitter.com slash Craig ship by the way these are Prevost most of these are Prevost motor coaches um, just gorgeous rolling you know five-star hotel rooms um, just a, just super nice motor coaches so there, there there were a number of them here in the resort uh, of course Sarasota is a magnet for you know high dollar travelers and uh, here they are so and the Sun and Fun Resort is probably the nicest uh, RV resort if you will in the country um, so you do see some of these um, high-end Prevost uh, motorhomes uh, here at the resort fairly regularly so I was wandering around this morning about a half an hour after sunup and we had some rain yesterday and uh, that was when I actually did the unboxing and then I did these clips uh, this morning uh, about a half an hour after sunup uh, here at the resort and again you can just give a different perspective as opposed to just a you know if I set up the tripod and just did a static shot when you got something that's not moving it's just sitting there it's just a, a you know motor coach you you need to add some pizzazz to it and that's what these crane shots allow you to do and in the past shots like this you know, it was expensive you had to have some expensive gear not that the Kessler crane is is cheap but still for for what you're getting for the money I think for the production value I think it is cheap and worth its weight in gold I'm really pleased that I, I found out about the Kessler and I'm pleased that um, I was able to get my hands on one I'm also going to be doing a review on a slider that I've got ordered and of course a slider is another way to add camera movement to some of your production and the reason I've held off on getting these items is is I don't like to carry any more than I have to carry I, I cover a lot of events and so I like to travel light but sometimes I do do sh shoots that are that are more set up and and you have an opportunity to use tools like this so I think it's good to, to have these arrows in my quiver and uh, and be able to um, to take advantage so once again please do subscribe to my channel and follow me on Twitter thanks again for watching